the banker which is on apple tv um Mm -hmm. releases march 20th it is amazing i know there was a lot of controversy we'll get into that in a second because i'm glad that this film got made i'm glad that it is out there because as i was watching it you know there's a a scene where you you i don't want to give away too much but you have to diminish yourself yes and your husband played by anthony mackie almost refuses to ever diminish himself, which yes. as a black man in America during the 50s and 60s was tough. Yes. And he was like, I'm not doing it. And yes. you said, well, um, hello, we're, you know, we're making sacrifices. I'm making the same sacrifice. And he looks at you like, well, of course you're supposed to. Because you're a woman. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And I thought about that because, you know, he was carrying the burden of being a black man with his intellect, with his genius, having to navigate and fight through a system that didn't see him. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. And you're by his side every way, mm-hmm. every step of the way, just ride or die, with the same genius. Mm-hmm. And you have the double burden. Mm-hmm. How does that relate to today with you and the things that you've had to endure? Mm. Um, <clears throat> I think women during that time were built differently. We were built to be the supporters, the nurturers, the pillow talkers, um, and the freedom fighters. And I think black women are still all of those things today. But now we're running the show. We're doing. We're creating our own businesses. We are in the forefront. We not just black women, but all women. But specifically to what your question, I think we have our capacity to create greatness is huge. And so I find myself oftentimes struggling and, you know, doing the balancing act of when I'm with my kids, I'm with my kids. When I'm with my guy, I'm with my guy. When I'm with my family, I'm with my family. But when I'm working, they all have to understand. And it took me a long time to feel um, to feel free and to feel as if I wasn't under constant anxiety Mm. because I think when you are expected to do a lot you can tailspin into a state of anxiety and that is just not good for anyone so I've learned to when I say no I really mean no if I invite you to my home and you violate me then you have to go if you are not kind and generous and honest, I'm not interested because I'm giving all those things. I'm not a perfect person, but you have to surround yourself with people who are willing to give what you give to grow. Was there a breaking point in your journey that led you to this place of mm-hmm. zero tolerance? Mm-hmm. Can you tell us about that, that, that line drawn in the sand where you were like, you know what? No, oh, no. I don't have to do this. Right. I... um. You know, when I started in this industry, actors were hired to act. No one cared about your opinions. No one cared about your thoughts and your ideas. Act, do your job, be happy to be here, young black girl, because there's only four of you working. Yes. Yes. And I think Jada and I were probably both very different because we were... I can speak for myself. I know that I had very strong opinions throughout my entire career from day one because it wasn't about being a diva or a star. It was about staying authentic to who I am as an artist. And I was willing to fight for that, right? Um, And so as certain experiences, you know, you grow, you get more work, you have different, you work on a, a, a white production or a black production or you work, you know, with a, a a three million dollar budget and then you work with a 60 million dollar budget like you all of these different things sort of shape your approach to your business and I was on a television show and I was making more money than I think I was had ever made but I was so miserable and I was not respected for my body of work And I hated what was on the page. And I felt like I wasn't good because the material wasn't servicing what I do as an actor. And someone said, just just say just say the lines like just say it and get get, get that check and move on. And I learned something about myself in that situation, which I already knew. But I learned that I don't operate like that. 
And it was in that moment that I knew that I would never do something that I was partially interested in for a check because I knew that God would provide abundance if I just stayed honest and true to who I am, right? Um, and I also worked with a bunch of white men who didn't give a fuck about me. I was just there to do a job and to facilita- facilitate a quota to check the box. Mm. And there's a difference between working with people you love no matter what they look like and people who need you to be there so that the studio is not on their ass about lack of diversity. 